A few years ago, I started to notice that a friend of mine and I, whenever we got together, we just seemed to have a lot of really great conversations. Of course, in my mind, that could only mean one thing. We needed to share these conversations with the world. We needed to start a podcast. But how does starting a podcast even work? I had no idea at the time. But I was determined to find out. The Great Big Intergalactic. It was going to be a big commitment, so before we actually started, I wanted to be certain that it would be worth it to invest my time and money into the project. He was on board with the idea, and finally, after months of contemplating it, we started moving forward with the process. But there was one big problem. I didn't know how to start a podcast. I had no idea where to even start. And looking online really didn't help me because it all just seemed like this giant wall of text and information. How could I judge for myself what sounded good by reading about it? I read about DAWs and hosting platforms and and all of the options and information. It all just seemed so overwhelming. What made one option better than the other. There were so many of them. Eventually, I met this new friend who was into podcasting, and he was already doing his own podcast, and he was doing a great job of it. So I just asked him how he was doing it, and I just basically copied his methods. I was pretty happy with the results. You know, eventually, after overcoming the learning curve and getting out of my own way at times, I think it took about two practice episodes and five actual episodes for me to eventually be happy with what we were doing. It took some time, but it was a good feeling, though, once we finally figured it out. Yay! We were podcasters, and we built what I felt was a good, entertaining show that could potentially help a lot of people out. And the guy who taught me how to launch it, his name is Derek, and he's actually going to be the main guest for this little mini-series. It'll be a few episodes about how to actually start the podcast if it's something that you're considering doing yourself, but maybe you don't know exactly where to start in the same way that I didn't when I started. I thought, who better to interview for this episode than the guy who taught me how to launch my own podcast? Derek, my guest, is the owner of Hindsight 101 Media. He is an audio-video consultant, which basically means that he helps people with their video needs as well as their audio needs, such as podcasting, editing, recommendations, setup, and all those things in between. If you want to learn more about his services, you can find him at hindsight101media.com. He also has a YouTube channel called Hindsight 101. It's a DIY channel, which doesn't really relate to audio or video, but if you want to get to know him, it'll provide a few examples of his work. But before we get to the questions with Derek, I wanted to get feedback from other podcasters as well. A little bit of insight as to why they felt so driven to create a podcast of their own. So I asked a few people to share their story about what inspires them to create content and how they went about it. And so here's the first testimonial, for a lack of a better word, that I received when I reached out. Hi, my name is Eric Gray. I am the host of Dumb People with Terrible Ideas, a podcast that I started this year, actually. I got into podcasting because I wanted a creative outlet, but also I heard a great podcast that served as inspiration. Axios has a podcast called How It Happened, and it's hosted by Jonathan Swan, who's a very respected journalist. And what attracted me to this was it was a scripted podcast. It was very quick, only 15, 20 minutes or so. And it was factually based with the news actualities in there as well. So you could actually hear people discussing uh, the situation as it was happening. And I listened to this podcast and was thrilled with it and tried to find other podcasts that were similar to it. And I couldn't really find one, so I made my own. And I took that basic formula that the Axios podcast had and added some background music and a ton of jokes. And uh, it's wonderful to know that in just a year... I've created nearly five hours of audio content that didn't exist before I started this podcast. 
my digital audio workstation, I use uh, Adobe uh, Creative Suite, which is a subscription service. It's a little expensive, but there's free options available. I use a Audio-Technica microphone that I bought used off of Facebook Marketplace. I also have a Scarlett Solo, which is a audio interface that, again, I bought used off Facebook. I'm happy with the way I've got it together, but the best part about podcasting is I would compare it to making a chili recipe. There are a million chili recipes. And what you do is you try one and you adapt it to your needs and eventually you have your own. And that's what I did. I started off with what other people recommended, adapted, changed, and now I have my own work process that works for me based upon um, expert advice that I had gotten previously. And now I'm just rocking and rolling with it. Go on your podcasting journey, put something out in the universe, and your tribe will find you. And hey, if you get a chance, listen to dumb people with terrible ideas. Good luck. Thank you, Eric. One of the reasons why I I enjoyed hearing some of these audio submissions that were sent to me is that not only do you get to listen to these podcasters talk about what their setup is like, but you also get to hear what it sounds like, too. Which is the most important thing, right? When talking about audio. Eric's setup sounds fantastic, and it's relatively inexpensive as well. Though he did talk about having the Adobe Suite. I use Adobe Edition for editing, and I agree that it is definitely expensive. And not only that, but it's a reoccurring expense as well. I'm kind of a frugal person, but this is one service that I feel is worth paying for, and it makes editing so much easier, and it helps create this much fuller sound that I love. In Adobe Edition, I use the speech volume leveler effect that it has, and that helps keep the level of the voices the same through, consistently throughout the entire episode. And I also use an effect a preset from the effects rack uh, called Radio Announcer Voice, which uses a compressor and an equalizer and a limiter to create like a more a, a fuller, more in your face kind of sound. But it does it in a way where it's easy to use, and even a dummy like me can figure it out. But again, a podcast doesn't have to be expensive, and that's what we're going to focus on in this first episode of this little mini-series. I asked my friend Derek from Hindsight 101, how much does it cost to start a podcast? Is there a way to start out inexpensively just to make sure that you actually enjoy podcasting before you dive in headfirst? And here's what he had to say. So it really doesn't cost a whole lot to start a podcast. Right now, you can just have your cell phone or iPad or if you have a computer, laptop. That's really all you need. Everything else is free. Uh, The more things you add to that, the better quality, I guess, you can have. But I'd say just start with your cell phone, especially if you have an iPhone and then you have the wired um, earbuds that come with it. I would say just go with that. That mic on those wired earbuds are really good. And then you have the the earbuds in your ear so you can monitor your sound. And then just you can either use GarageBand. That works really well. Or if you want to, you can use a program called Anchor. That's uh, a hosting platform for podcasts. So there's a lot you can do for very little um, if you just know where to look. As far as what essential equipment you would need to start a podcast, like I said, all you really need is something to listen to your audio, like a pair of earbuds or headphones, a microphone, and then something to record onto, such as your laptop, tablet, uh, phone, anything like that would work. What type of software do you need to record? The kind of software you will need depends on the platform that you're using. So for Windows, a free program is called Audacity. And then for um, Apple in general, the from a Mac to a tablet to an iPhone, you can use GarageBand. And that's actually really good uh, as, a, as a beginner to use. So... Those are the main ones I would say use if you if you want to do it the software route. Like I said, you could record straight to something like Anchor or any other hosting platform has their own recording and editing software built into their hosting platform. But if you want something kind of standalone, then those are the things I would recommend. What kind of commitment is involved in starting a podcast and how much work does it involve? I think the kind of a commitment that is needed to start a podcast varies depending on what type of podcast you're producing. Like with my podcast that I produce, I do very little research for it. There's not a lot of prep, not a lot of scripting, so not a lot of time on the front end. 
Now on the back end, I'm very particular about how my audio sounds, taking out the ahs and ums and any other little flubs and mistakes. So, and then that takes a very long process uh, because our, our podcast is probably an hour to a little bit over. It used to be two hours, but we shortened it, but I'll get into that a little later. So it all depends on how much you want to put into it, but I don't think it takes that much. So say you do a 15 minute podcast, it really doesn't take that much time to edit and record. You could probably have it done in under an hour. And then the, the quicker you get at it, it would be even less time. For me, when I first started looking at options to start a podcast, it just all seems so very overwhelming. Where should a new podcaster even start with this process? At first glance, starting a podcast may seem overwhelming, but in actuality, it's not. And then once, especially once you get a hang of the ropes, but also there's a lot of things out there now because podcasting has become so mainstream that they, they make it super easy for you to do. So it just depends on what you get on. So Anchor, like I said, is probably the easiest one that you can do. And they just make it simple, stupid. Um, I'm not a big fan of Anchor, but there's reasons for that that I'll get into later. But Anchor is probably the best way to start a podcast. If you're nervous or inexperienced, they pretty much do everything for you. All you have to do is hit record and they'll walk you through like step by step what to do to get it out into the world. Now, as far as doing inexpensively, like I said, use what you have. You don't have to buy all this fancy equipment. As long as you have a good story or a good topic, you know, people will forgive a little bit rough audio. I'm not saying it could be horrible audio, but you know, if it's not top notch Joe Rogan quality, if you know who that is, then don't worry about that. You don't have to, you don't have to be like that first starting out because no one's really listening. So over time, you're going to improve with stuff like that. So start with what you have to make sure you're interested in it and you want to keep doing it. So like I said, if you have a phone, a tablet, um, you can, like I said, use those free programs and just start that way. So there's really no upfront cost. And a lot of these hosting platforms where you have to house your podcast have free options. So you don't have to pay right away. You could record a couple episodes before you actually have to commit any money to it. Would you say that someone needs a studio in order to start a podcast? I don't think podcasters need a studio or a treated environment. What I mean by a treated environment is no noise, no reverb or echo. Um, so it, it kind of like a dead in sound. There's, there's not a, you don't hear the air conditioning or children or anything like that or the street. I don't think you really need anything like that. Plus, that's very expensive. Uh, soundproofing is very expensive. A lot of what people do in their homes is sound dampening, and that's different. It's just to lessen the noise or lessen um, noises that you can make, such as reverb. But sound dampening is very expensive. And when people say they're soundproofing, they're probably sound dampening. But anyways, no, you don't need a studio. You can just record in a closet with clothes in it because really you just want something that doesn't bounce sound off the wall. So the more stuff you have in there, furniture, clothes, pictures, anything to keep the sound from bouncing off these echoey walls will work. You can even do it in a car. It's just because of windows uh, don't keep a lot of sound out. You want to probably do it in an empty parking lot away from a lot of noise. But there's a lot of ways you can do it. I actually did a video on it where... You can do it cheaply within your home. Put a blanket over your head if you really want to. It gets hot in the summer, but you can do a lot of different things to get good audio without having a studio. But that also comes hand in hand with the type of equipment that you get. So there's two types of microphones. We won't go into great detail, but there's a dynamic and a condenser. A condenser is used when you have a treated environment because it picks up every little nuance of your voice, but it also picks up every nuance in the room too. So if you have a lot of background noise, then that will be picked up through the mic. Now, a dynamic mic is a little more forgiving because you have to be right up on the mic in order for it to get a good sound. And then the closer you are to the mic, the less background noise the mic will pick up. So it really comes hand in hand with the type of equipment that you have and your environment. You really have to marry those two together. It doesn't actually take a lot of money to start a podcast if you just want to try it out before you make some huge commitment. Of course, if you want to start out with a bigger budget, that's an option too. I think it probably depends on the vision for your project, how much experience you have speaking, how much expendable money you have. Is it just an experiment or do you know for sure that you're going to be doing it long term? All those things are probably factors in trying to figure out how much money you want to spend on a new podcast. But we'll talk more about some of those other options in upcoming episodes of this series. 
I'd like to thank both Derek from Hindsight 101 and Eric Gray from Dumb People with Terrible Ideas for making these contributions to the show. And on the next episode of the series, we'll be venturing a little deeper into what it takes to start a podcast. And I'm looking forward to hearing more from our contributors as well as learning more from Derek. If you are a podcaster and you'd like to share your testimonial about what it what drives you to be a content creator, your experiences in learning how to podcast, what equipment you use, what you've learned, what you would do differently if you had it to do over again. If you're interested in contributing, please email me at TGBI, as in the Great Big Intergalactic, TGBI Universe at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for listening to the show. The Great Big Intergalactic can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, YouTube, Google Play, Apple iTunes, and anywhere else that podcasts can be heard. If social media is your thing, you can follow the program on Facebook or Twitter. If you enjoy the show, upvote, share, like, and subscribe whenever and wherever those things can be done. If you'd like to send feedback, the easiest way to do that is to email the show at tgbiuniverse at gmail.com, tgbi as in the Great Big Intergalactic, or you can leave a voicemail at 216-200-7940. Contributions could include written feedback, audio submissions, voicemails, or potentially even live guests. It was great having you today, and see you next time.